Hey guys, Fred with Bravo One X-Ray. Let's do some case prep. Case prep 101 coming at you right now. All right, uh, I should probably start by saying that this is the way that I do it. There's probably a million ways to reload on progressive press, but this is my preferred method and um, it just works for me. Uh, you may do it a different way, that's fine. Um, but uh, this is the way I do it. Um, I like shiny brass, so I, I add a step to my whole process so I can get nice shiny brass. Anyway, but the way I started, we've already done, gone through the sorting process. We are gonna reload all this brass here. Sorry if that's noisy. But we need to get it spread out on my towel here. And this is my lubrication towel. It's all I use it for is to lube the brass with. So it gets a little residual lubrication that stays on there. And uh, we just want to get all these kind of flattened out so we can get a nice even spray in all these guys. And then we'll mix it all up and give them one more squirt after that. Um, I have made my own um, case lube. Um, I'm sure that you guys know that there's a whole bunch of stuff out there you can do. But what I did, for, the go for those that don't know, is I got 100% pure lanolin from Amazon. I'll go grab it so you can see what it looks like. Um, it's this stuff right here. Um, 100% uh, liquid lanolin. Uh, it's by Now Solutions. I got this off of Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description, I guess. It wasn't very expensive. Two bottles. I think I bought for 10 bucks or something. I, and I can't remember, but it's been a while. Uh, this stuff will go a long way. Um, it about three, one, two, two ounces per 12 ounces of, um, 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol and uh, it works pretty good. Anyway, so what I do is I get them all kind of flattened out. Um, some people like to have them all nice and neat and organized and stuff, but that's just a um, lot of time. But I uh, just get it set up like this and here's my bottle. I'll give it a good shake. Um, it doesn't really separate too much, but uh, the stuff that does separate, you want to kind of get it up in there in the alcohol. So I'll give it a good shake. <clears throat> and then we're just going to go ahead and spray these guys down. I don't know if you can see that. They are kind of wet, but that most of that's alcohol and it will evaporate. So then what I'll do is I'll take my towel and I'll kind of get it wrapped up like this. And I'll take both ends and I'll just kind of mix up the brass. This is kind of more than I normally do here. So anyway, so I'll mix up the brass so kind of the lanolin gets mixed all around on them. You can see why the, how the towel gets uh, some residual on there. But that's okay because it just kind of sticks with it and it kind of helps with the process. So I'll just spread it out one more time. Like that. I can only, it's, my hands are already super sticky. Or not sticky, but uh, you can feel the lanolin. So I'll give them one more kind of spray. And by doing this way, I've, uh, I have not uh, come across a stuck, stuck case yet. So um, it seems to work pretty well. But once again, this is just the way that I do it. There you go. Now the trick is too, is to open these back out. Oop, I'll grab those in a minute, but 
is to uh, spread them back out so they can uh, the alcohol can evaporate. It'll take about 10 minutes or so to let it all evaporate, but these will be nicely lubed after that. And you won't have any problems with your uh, getting a stuck case in your sizing die. All right, so that's how I uh, lubricate them. And then I'll be back in a minute after I kind of got to readjust the cameras and, um, and uh, give this stuff a chance to uh, evaporate. Now those are uh, evaporating there and uh, we're giving them time to, to uh, dry. We're going to go ahead and change out my tool head. Uh, once again, this is the way that I do it. Um, there are many, many ways to do this, but this is just the way that I do it. Normally you would have your sizing and decapping die in station number one here. But uh, like I said before, I like to have shiny brass. So I will um, resize them separately uh, from loading them. Uh, you'd have it in this first station here if you were just going to go ahead through the whole reloading process um, without uh, cleaning them after lubricating and sizing them. But uh, I like to, to uh, clean them after I do that. So we'll go ahead and remove this uh, tool head for a separate tool head that I have. Uh, you have to take the safety bar off here, set that aside. There's two pins that hold the uh, XL650's uh, tool head on, um, and it comes off super easy. And that's it. That's how it comes off. So then I have, on a stand over here, I have my sizing and decapping die. That will just take its place right there. We'll put this over here on my stand. Put the two pins in, and now we're ready to size and decap. But we're going to let these dry for a couple more minutes, um, and then once they get dry and they're ready to go, we'll uh, show you how I uh, resize them. All right, now we've given the brass about 10 or 15 minutes to dry, or uh, let the alcohol evaporate. Um, due to the uh, distance of my ceiling to my case feeder here, um, I can only use these smaller bins to feed the case feeder. So I'll take uh, a bunch of these here. Sorry if that's loud. And uh, I'll go ahead and put them in my case feeder. This might be loud, I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. But... Anyway, that's about half of what I had on the towel here, up in the case feeder. If you look right here, there's a switch for high, off, and low. Uh, when I first got the case feeder, I, I bought the case feeder a couple, three weeks after I bought the press. And uh, when I first started using it, I didn't think I would need the fast speed or the high speed. Um, but what I found is that if you, if you put it in low, um, it gives the cases an opportunity to fall down the tube backwards or um, neck down instead of neck up. Um, so what I found is if you put it in the high speed, it will feed them more reliably into the uh, feed tube with the uh, neck, or I'm sorry, the neck up and the um, head stamp down. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. That might be also be a little bit noisy. Um, we'll get the, the feed tube filled up here and then I'll rearrange the camera so you can kind of see this side of the press over here and uh, see what's going on in action. So once again, I'll just go ahead and put this on the high speed. And I'll just take a second or two and then the cases will start coming down here in a second. There we go. All right, there we go. Uh, the case feeder is full. 
and uh, the case uh, tubes here are full. We got our sizing die in. Now we'll just have to make sure our, uh, the adjustment on our sizing die is good to go. And uh, we'll start cranking out some uh, uh, resized 223 pr brass here with, uh, and we're also taking the um, um, primer out as well. All right guys, got everything situated. Turned around here so you guys can see this side of the press. We have the um, resizing die and my, my secondary shell plate here. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, tool head. And uh, what we need to do is to make sure that our sizing die is properly installed and adjusted so it resizes the brass correctly. So I have a uh, Lyman uh, case gauge here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll run a piece of brass through it. We'll throw it through the gauge gauge, make sure everything's good to go. And then we can start cranking, the, cranking out uh, the resizing and depriming of this brass. Let's go ahead and get one into the, uh, into the uh, um, resizing die. And then we'll go ahead and pull it out here. We're going to put it into the case uh, gauge, and if you can see that, it is perfect. So that's what we're going to run with. We're just going to go ahead and start cranking them out here. Um, see how fast it goes to get these done here. All right, here we go. get one that quite made it into the shell plate there. Oh, that one's going to have to go into the recycle bin there. All right, keep going. That does happen from time to time. Especially when you're kind of going as fast as I'm going. Go ahead and check another one here. Still good to go. Yep, everything looks good. Oh. Came in upside down, I didn't catch it. Uh, I should be able to pull it out here. Yep, there you go. That was easy. Go back in there, keep going. I felt a little funny. Yep, I uh, did knock the primer out of that one. I could feel it going back in. Yeah. Pin stick sticking out far enough. It just uh, must not get pushed all the way up in there or something. We'll just keep going. Surprising, even going this fast, you can still feel something like that. Um, that you could feel uh, that I was actually pushing the old primer back in. Even going as fast as I'm going. Do another check here. I mean, it should never really change. 
but I always kind of like to to double check to make sure that uh, nothing's moved. No, I didn't push it far, far enough forward to push the case in, so that was my fault. And I short, since I short stroked it, the uh, primer feed system didn't rotate all the way back around. Okay, here we go. Oh. I know I'm fed upside down. That does happen from time to time. Um, I try to catch it before it gets it here, but I missed this one too. So I'm just gonna pull it out real fast. I don't know if you can hear the case feeder, but we are already out of brass in the case feeder. See, we already kind of filled up our bin there. Need more brass. And the last couple pieces of brass are always the hardest to get. <laughs> Take the longest to pick up. All right, so this is all the brass that we just lubricated. That's everything into the press now. And uh, we're ready to go. Here we go. Oh, no, wait. Got to put another uh, bin on here. So I'm going to dump them all over the floor. checked in a while let's go ahead and give one a check good to go
That's one thing when you're using one of these presses, you really got to keep your eyes moving, checking everything. That's how I spotted that case. I went in there upside down, even though I missed the two before that, but, uh, that way it kind of prepares you uh, when it comes out and you can kind of stop any stoppages and um, um, stuff that's going to really slow you down. Especially when we get to the reloading part, um, there's a lot of stuff going on at the same time. We'll cover it when we get to that point, but uh, um, you can see we're almost done with these. Uh, I'm somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 rounds of resizing, decapping of these. So let me uh, knock the rest of these out and then we'll move on. Yeah, felt another primer get pushed back in. When that happens, you kind of want to check the pin on your uh, decapping die. And it still is extended fine, so it was just a, a hiccup. But once again, it's it's crazy to, to be able to feel something like that when you're moving as fast as you are. Um, that just gives you uh, an idea of how really precision this Dillon Precision Press is. Got another upside, uh, upside down case right there. Like I said, it's good to always keep a visual on this stuff. It'll save you a lot of headache later. And trust me, it's a lot faster to find it now and fix it. Uh, here here we go you know plus it'll keep you from uh, ruining another case because you know the object is not to ruin too many cases but everything looks good to go now so let's keep moving oh, my bin's getting a little full over here replace the bin I don't know, it didn't take too long, did it? But there's, uh, I, I like I said, I'm not exactly for the count, but uh, I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 uh, pieces of brass resized. Now ready for the next step, which is uh, removing the, the primer pocket. I'm not removing it, but uh, removing the primer crimp in the primer pocket, uh, cleaning the primer pocket, uh, chamfer inside and out the neck and also resize the case. I'm sorry, not resize, but trimming the case. So that's what's up next. That's the long process, unfortunately. And uh, let me get everything situated again and we'll move everything around and we'll start doing that part. 
Okay, we're back. Um, as you can see, I've already been kind of working at this a little bit. Uh, I got about half the brass um, already um, processed, and this is ready to go into onto the next step. This uh, bin over here is the one I emptied, and uh, this one here is the one that still needs to be done. So I'm going to go through the steps with you and uh, show you what I've got going on here. Um, this is my Lyman uh, Case Prep Express. Um, I've changed out a couple of the pieces on it uh, just because I like the way these ones work better. Um, these are the, the this is the uh, outside chamfer and inside chamfer. Those are the ones that came with the Lyman Express. This is an RCBS military crimp. Uh, small military crimp removal tool. It just I think it works better than the uh, Lyman does and this is also an RCBS um, primer pocket cleaning brush and uh, the Lyman came with a uh, like a, a straight edge kind of a scraper thing. I don't like that very much. This brush works much better in my personal opinion. Um, so that's what I'm doing for the uh, primer pocket and the chamfering. And then for the trimming, I'm using the Lee trimming tool on a drill. Uh, this is a very long and kind of tedious process. And uh, I'll just run it through you with a couple of them with you. And then uh, we'll uh, get to the next step here very shortly. Um, at least this, <laughs> what you'll see is going to be very shortly. Um, I'll run through a bunch of them and then you can see how I'm doing it. And uh, we'll just go from there. So this is the brass that we just took off the press from sizing and depriming. Uh, you can see that the, well, I hope you can see inside of there, the uh, primer pockets are still pretty dirty. Um, and uh, there's some military crimps on the, this Federal Cartridge Company brass. So you can kind of see the red or orangey line still around from where the, uh, they put the sealant in there. But, um, so we just got about, I don't know, a full box to go, call it whatever you want, 200 or so to go. Um, and just to be honest with you, this will take a couple of hours to do. Um, it's just how long it takes. And I haven't really come up with a better way to do it without uh, um, purchasing some um, pretty serious equipment. So I uh, usually have something going on my uh, computer here. I'll have, uh, like I was just watching uh, Grand Tour. I uh, really enjoy that. Or, you know, I'll bring up my uh, um, my uh, YouTube channel here and uh, check that out. But <clears throat> anyway, so that's why I have the, the computer right there. It helps a lot to pass the time. And because uh, um, this is a kind of a lengthy process. I apologize, this isn't very loud, but I don't know how well it'll come over the uh, microphone. Um, but uh, just to show you the process, here we go. So you take a key, uh, piece of brass, you put it into this little locking device here. Give that a twist that locks the brass into the, into the drill. Stick the, this piece in here, turn the drill on, give it a press, and that's it. That's how you trim it. Oop. This obviously catches all the shavings. Then you do the uh, military crimp removal. Do a couple spins on there, the brush, a little bit of a twist. Uh, inside chamfer, outside chamfer. And that one's done. Start the process all over again. Put it in here. The trim that one didn't even need to be trimmed. Get the military crimp removed. You can see little little pieces dropping out from the grooves there. A little cleaning of the primer pocket. Inside, outside. Now this one's done. Uh, what I'll also do is every once in a while I'll drop it back into my case gauge here. Uh, verify that we still are good. You know this is just a 
a third check if you will just to make sure but it's also the case gauge what it does it'll tell you that you've trimmed the proper length and uh, you just want to make sure that you're uh, right, uh, right at that line right there or just right, right close to it but not, not past the uh, um, outermost edge here but we're doing good trimming the right length everything looks good next piece That one doesn't need to be trimmed. Get that primer pocket done, or uh, the uh, factory cramp, little scrub. That one's done. That one had a little bit to trim. Primer pot, the uh, crimp. Primer pocket, inside, outside. Um, this is one of the reasons why I didn't feel you needed to uh, really, when we lubricated the brass and put it into the press for resizing, um, you know the guys that like to line them all up they say it's another way to check them all but i'm touching every piece of brass when i do this i see every uh case mouth i you know the 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 brass is spinning right in front of me so i can see if there's any damage to it i can feel it you know so i'm getting a really good overall inspection on the brass when i'm doing all this You can see it really well. Now I usually kind of check to make sure everything looks good. Next one. So you can see how, you know, this is probably taking about 30 seconds or so per piece of brass. But, you know, time that times that by a couple hundred, it adds up pretty quick, uh, unfortunately. So once I get done with uh, trimming and uh, chamfering and doing the military crimps on all of these, this is kind of the, one of the bummer things about this is that this, sometimes this tie down doesn't really clamp on too tight or I don't get it too tight and it'll pop off like that. You can really feel the uh, military crimp being removed by that cutter. And just as soon as it frees up, you know you're done. So you don't have to sit there and hold it for a long period of time. I wanted very little that had to be removed from it. And you'll feel that the, uh, the cutter um, or the drill starts to spin freely. You'll know that you're done trimming. And the way this the way the way this trimmer works is uh, the cutting blades are on the end of this wand right here, and you can see that there's four blades on this. And what happens is is you you know you're sticking this inside the case, and uh, it comes out the primer flash hole, and you can see I can already tell this one's going to need to be trimmed a little bit because the rod is not touching the or coming out the end here. So it will rub on the inside of this, and that's how you get a set depth um, every time with this. So you basically set this tool once, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. And once you get to that uh, where you want it, um, then you're, you're good to go. So you just keep doing this, and uh, the, way you ch the way you check to tr trim for depth, uh, correct trim depth is you'll spin it in here so that one had a bunch remember i should just uh, so i could see that i had a bunch to come off but you can also take your calipers here when you're first setting it up so you can make sure you got zero on your calipers here 
and we're going for 175, 174. Uh, this one shows 174, so that's good. We'll put it in the the case. Oh, hold on, I gotta take the chamfer off before I go into the case gauge. So we'll take the uh, factory crimp off. We'll clean it inside, outside, and then check it, and that's perfect. So this is going along just great. It just uh, this part is very, very time-consuming and can be very, very boring, unfortunately. Um, to do 500 pieces of brass, I'm guessing it's right about four hours or so. Uh, maybe just slightly longer. Um, and your fingers get numb and, and tired. It's a lot of movement here, I know, but I'm trying to get it a little spread out so you guys can kind of see the whole process here. It's a little wobbly. I just gotta take a bunch off of that one. And you could definitely feel the primer crimp on that one. A little clean up. Inside. Outside. All right, that was, uh, I don't know, about 20 cases, just to kind of give you an idea of how I'm doing it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and spare you the uh, boredom of watching me do this forever. Um, I don't even think uh, watching it in, in fast motion would be uh, very interesting. So we'll go ahead and kill this for right now, and uh, we'll come back uh, as soon as I get... Um, close to done here and then we'll move on to the next step all right be right back all right oh, five more to go so it's been about two hours since I uh, last left you Got five more to go and this is the longest and most tedious part of everything right here. But almost got knocked out. So everything's been resized, trimmed to length. The factory crimp has been removed. The primer pocket's been cleaned. And they've all been chamfered uh, inside and out on the neck. So <clears throat> get these last couple knocked out here and 
we'll be on to the next step which is for me is uh, cleaning the brass um, I prefer to wet tumble um, I don't have a vibra vibratory tumbler at all everything I do is wet tumble uh, when I pre-wash before I decap and size I just wash it with uh, Dawn and uh, water this time I'll be adding a, another ingredient or actually if I won't be using Dawn um, I was watching a YouTube video and oh man I, you'll have to forgive me I don't remember who came up with the idea but uh, we use something different for the soap instead of Dawn we use something else last piece here Done. Finally. So let's just grab a couple random ones and we'll check them in our case gauge here. Cut the length properly, fitting in the case gauge, no problem. So it looks like we've done a good job so far. Everyone seems to be happy. Length is all right. And they're all fitting in the case gauge. Good. Okay, and I, I was periodically checking as, as well. So the next step is going to be washing in the wet tumbler. Should I save up my little brass shavings here? Alright. So for my wet tumbler, I have a... Uh, of a homemade deal here I use a, a two and a half gallon bucket with uh, five pounds of um, stainless steel media and it basically they're just pins um, cut to about maybe a half inch or so in length um, they are magnetic so that makes it a little easier to clean up um, if you drop some on the floor or whatever, you can just use a magnet to pick them up. But we're just going to take our brass that we've just uh, trimmed to length and um, chamfered and all that stuff with. I'm going to put it in the bucket here. And then we're going to put a couple of the magic ingredients in. First one being, <clears throat> excuse me, Armor All Ultra Shine Wash and Wax. Um, the reason why I do this is um, it has a good grease cutter in it, so that helps good all, get that lanolin off. And I also it also has um, uh, Carnuba Wax that will leave a very light film of wax on there and will help protect that shine once we get it on there. Um, there's no specific recipe to this, I just, a little dollop. About as much as you put in to wash your car with, I guess. Then the next one is Lemmy Shine. Now Lemmy Shine is a water softener. Um, and the important thing to remember about Lemmy Shine is that um, uh, more is not better. Uh, if anything, you want to use the, the least amount possible. Um, and what I've found for my recipe, if you will, for what works for me in this two gallon bucket with about 500 pieces of brass is less than a nine millimeter shell. So I'll take a nine millimeter shell that has not been deprimed <clears throat> and I will just 
Put a little bit of this Lemmy Shine in there. And you see that's about, I would call it 85-90% full. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's about 80-90% full of a 9mm uh, piece of brass. That's all it takes to put in here. Then what I'll do is I'll cover the brass with water. Um, you don't need a whole lot of water. You just need to be able to cover it and uh, let let the uh, pins and the soap and the let me shine do its do its work. Um, I'll put it on my home built uh, rotary tumbler for about three hours. So I'm gonna go fill it up with water. I'll put it on the tumbler, and then when I come back, we'll pull it off the tumbler, and uh, I'll show you how I get everything out of the bucket, and then what I do to dry it. So um, I'll see you in about three hours. Okay, this is my uh, wet tumbler setup that I have. What this is is a food grade marinating tumbler that I picked up at a restaurant supply store used and uh, I can't remember what I paid for, 50, 60 bucks or something like that. And, uh, but uh, as you can see with the two gallon, two hours, I think it's two and a half gallon plastic drum um, or plastic pail on there with a snap-on lid. It uh, rotates really good. It's relatively quiet. Um, you can have a conversation over it, unlike, unlike one of those uh, vibratory tumblers. And some of the uh, factory or the purpose-built wet tumblers that they have out there for brass, they seem to spin really fast, and uh, which would make them a lot more noisy, I think. But this one isn't too bad. Um, and we've been going for three hours now, so we're at the three-hour mark. We're going to pull it off and uh, see what we got inside. So let me switch the cameras around, and uh, let's go ahead and pull it off. All right, me... All right uh, for this part, actually from pretty much now on in the reloading process, I'll be wearing uh, rubber gloves. The reason being is that uh, the oil in your fingers will leave fingerprints on the brass. And uh, when we're reloading, the uh, bullets will have exposed lead. So doing it for a couple reasons here. But uh, this uh, process, I just don't want to get my fingerprints on the brass. And um, um, during the drying process, keep your hand dry too. We just grab a bunch and you'll have to shake them out. Give them a couple taps because some of this brass will have um, uh, the needle still in them. And uh, so you just want to get it, make sure you get all that shaken out. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but they're coming out. Um, and I put them out on this towel. And what I'll do is I'll kind of do something similar to what I did when I, when I lubricated, lubricated them. And I will wrap them up in the towel and get all the excess of water out. And on top of that, You'll hopefully shake if there's any more needles or any more of these uh, pins left in them. You will shake those pins out at the same time. So this process takes just a couple minutes here. I don't make you sit through the whole thing, but uh, you kind of get the gist of it. I mean, I don't have a media separator. That's why I kind of I have to do it this way. But it works. You know, it just takes a little bit longer probably. Um, yeah, I won't have a lot of. A lot of needles in it still. But if you can see the brass that's coming out on the on the towel here, I mean, it looks brand new. And this is why I, I, I uh, size it first. And then um, instead of doing it all in one, one whole sweep on the, the press, because if you do it that way, you still have the lanolin still all over the brass. It makes kind of a mess. Um, the brass doesn't doesn't look this good. 
when you're uh, when you leave the lanolin on it. Um, I think just aesthetically, probably more than anything, this just looks better. Um, plus, you don't want all that lanolin and stuff being, you know, put into your uh, rifle or pistol or whatever the case may be. So this is why I prefer to do it this way. It probably adds a step and make actually make it take a little bit longer. But I tell you what, it's still 10 times faster than on a single stage press. So um, I'm very, very grateful for that. So when I get all this, uh, all these needles out and stuff, and then I'll come back to you as soon as I'm ready to shake them out. Be right back. All right, there we got all the brass out on the table, uh, towel here. So what I'll do is I'll, like I said, it's very similar to when I was lubing them up for sizing. So I'll get the towel folded in thirds here. And I'll just shake them back and forth. And what that's doing is getting all that excess water out from the inside the, the uh, brass. And hopefully shaking out any extra pins that are in there. And uh, just, you know, soaking up any of that extra water. It doesn't take a whole lot. That's probably good right there. Yeah, like a little pot of gold there. Look how nice and shiny those are. So, I, there's two ways to do this. I have a uh, food dehydrator that a friend of mine got me got for me from the, the thrift store. I mean, five bucks or something or less. And you just take this and you put it out on the rack of the food dehydrator. And this will get it the uh, inside nice, nice and dry, and it'll get the uh, prevent any water spots from forming, and uh, keep them all nice and shiny and new looking. This is probably actually going to overload this thing a little bit, but uh, you kind of get the idea here. Another way you could do it, and I've done this before too, it works really well if you're kind of more of in a hurry. You see, you could take all these and put them on a cookie sheet. I don't know how your wife or significant other will feel about that, but you can put them on a cookie sheet and then put your oven on 200 degrees. Leave them in there for an hour, hour and a half, and then just shut the oven off and leave them in there for another one to two hours or something like that. And uh, they'll come out nice and dry. All right, so i got the food dehydrator disc all filled up here, and I can see that there's uh, about four pins on the towel, three pins maybe on the towel here that I'll have to pick out. But then we'll just uh, put the lid on. This guy here, I'm gonna get them all evened out. And then I, you probably can't see it, but there's a food dehydrator thing down here. And I'll just turn it on. Here, let me uh, move the camera. There you go. Yeah, I'll just leave them on there for a couple hours and uh, they will be nice and dry, thoroughly dry. And then uh, they'll be ready for actual reloading. So that'll be this, the next process is actually getting these babies loaded up and uh, ready for the range again. Well, there you have it. Case Prep 101 in the books. As you can see, it's a very long and lengthy, tedious task, but must be done, especially when reloading rifle brass. I wanted to give you a, a real-time kind of understanding of how long it really takes. And uh, what I actually was able to do is take five to six hours worth of work and condense it into one hour. But I think all the information that's there is, is, is vital and will help you understand what need, needs to be done when reloading 223556. If you like what you see, please, please subscribe and, uh, and hit that like button. Give me the thumbs up and uh, tell me that I'm doing a good job. I really appreciate it. And this is Fred with Bravo 1X-Ray, signing out.